Welcome to our online worship. My name is Patrick and I'm a minister in the Methodist Church in the north and the northwest of Bristol and for two villages into South Gloucestershire. Alongside this service this week, if you'd like to read some written devotions, can I invite you to go to the bottom of this YouTube video, follow the link to our church notices and therein you will find some written devotions provided this week by Neil Briggs who's a local preacher in our circuit here and part of the ARC team, our missional outreach team serving uh, this area as well. Today, as during the rest of Lent, this recorded service will begin with a Lenten cross and just a short reflection on part of the reading we're going to hear later. If you'd like to join in with that wherever you are, uh, can I invite you just to go and get a cross and then just to add to it uh, some items a stone uh, something to represent a crown of thorns a cup a towel and a jar and today some leaves if you want to get those and join in uh, please just pause the video for a moment whilst you get those things and then we will continue Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen. Jesus rode into Jerusalem not as a conquering king, but in humility, the servant king, ready to complete the task for which he had walked this world. Like the crowd which gathered, let us welcome Jesus into our lives of service and of worship. Let us pray. As the people spread their coats and palm branches on the ground to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome you into our lives, King of glory, King of peace, Servant King. Reign in our hearts and lives this day and all days, that we might praise your holy name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. And now let's continue in prayer. Wonderful God, thank you that you meet us right here where we are in the ordinary stuff and activities of our day. As we journey through Holy Week, may we recognise you in Jesus Christ, be empowered to live like him, to live into the preciousness of the life that you sustain in us. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine upon us. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And we continue with our prayers in a prayer of confession. Jesus rode into Jerusalem not as a conquering king but in humility our servant king, ready to complete the task for which he had walked the world. 
Forgive us, Lord, those times when we think too highly of ourselves. And remind us always that you ask from us lives dedicated to service, to you and to our neighbours, wherever and whoever they might be. Enable us to take off our cloaks of self-righteousness and lay them down at your feet. And the psalmist reminds us in Psalm 32, verse 5, Then I acknowledged my sin and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. Thanks be to God. And we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer in the modern version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The story of Palm Sunday, which we explore this week, is full of clear signs that Jesus is the Messiah. Yet, in the passage, there are also signs of the tensions that will unfold in that week. The Pharisees' protests point to their opposition, whilst the crowd's chants suggest they are expecting a different kind of Messiah. Yet, Amidst all these tensions, Jesus states a dramatic truth, that if the crowd were to fall silent, the stones would cry out. It's a powerful sign that he is supremely worthy of all our praise. And after our reading, I'm going to share a reflection from a colleague in Sheffield, James Morley, and I'm grateful to him for providing that this week. So from Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 28, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt, that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Is it a bird? Is it plain? No, they haven't invented that. Is it a king? Well, it can't be. He's riding on a donkey. But everyone's cheering and celebrating. It's turning into a proper street party. But why do they keep asking, who's Anna? It's him. That bloke people are saying is a king. Our king, allegedly. Everyone's king, apparently. The one God sent to save us. And although sometimes I think I'm the only person I need saving from is myself, some people say he's the Messiah. 
Although some people have said that he isn't the Messiah. That's certainly what the powers that be think will happen if he keeps stirring things up. They'll just get on and crucify him. But apparently he doesn't go around saying he is the Messiah. No, he just asks other people who they think he is. Well, I think he must be a few loaves and fish short of a picnic. What sort of a king is supposed to ride a donkey? Just look at everyone though. I can't remember the last time I saw people round here quite so happy. There must be something in the water or the wine. I mean, we've waited long enough. We prayed hard enough. But things don't seem to be getting any better though. Maybe God's not listening or just too busy. Or just doesn't care. Or at least not about people like you and me. I really wish God would send someone though. It'd be nice to have a bit of hope. Anyway, seeing everyone having such a good time, at least it lifts their spirits. All this excitement's quite contagious, actually. I might get myself a palm branch. When in Rome and do all that. Oh, we're in Jerusalem. Sorry. Yeah, I could waft a palm branch at Jesus and tell him I'm his biggest fan. Of course, it's all rubbish, really, isn't it? All this Messiah mumbo-jumbo, it'll never amount to anything. Probably end in tears. Mark my words, it'll never change anything. It'd take an act of God to change things in this world. As we reflect on those words, and thanks once again to James, let's turn once more to prayer. And can I just invite you, if you have a cross, to hold it, otherwise just to imagine one being held in your hand and on this weekend of palm sunday let's imagine that cross as we focus on the humility of jesus lord jesus thank you that you came in humility to show us what love is really like thank you for the example you have given us teach us how to love like you do we pray for all those we are called upon to love our families, friends, colleagues and neighbours. We remember any especially we have been asked to pray for. We think particularly of one person that we spent time with. Show to us one particular thing that we can do for them this week. And as we think of them, we think also and pray for those in our world who are downtrodden, forgotten, unloved and homeless. We pray for refugees and those fleeing pain, those escaping war and persecution, holding in our mind particularly the people of Ukraine, those in Syria and Yemen and Afghanistan and other places of the world. May they all know you especially close to them today and in this week. As we remember that you came in humility, we pray for the world's leaders and rulers. We ask that you give to them wisdom and humility. Give them listening ears and open hearts and a deep desire to put others first. And now let us imagine this cross being right in front of us. Lord Jesus, go ahead of us this week into all that we do. We think now of the places where we know we are going this week. We acknowledge our feelings about each situation and ask you to be there with us. We know there might also be unexpected places or people who will cross our path this week. Make us gracious in every situation we face. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you went willingly to the cross for us. Without your amazing act of love, we would not be here today. Thank you for your goodness and self-sacrifice. 
Give us the courage to tell our friends and neighbours about what you have done for us so that one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. And now let's imagine the cross held high. Lord Jesus, risen in glory, thank you for all the joys that we have in our lives. Thank you for sunny days, blossom on the trees, blue skies and birdsong. Thank you for all those who've made us smile this week. And we think particularly of two people that make our lives richer and deeper. And as we walk with you through the darkness of Good Friday into the triumph and wonder of Easter, Help us to learn something new about you this week that will spur us on to a deeper relationship with you. And we ask these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed is his name. Amen. And a prayer for us to be sent out. May God grant us exuberance of the Palm Sunday cried and the humility of Jesus riding on a donkey, the energy and excitement of everyone in that crowd, and the calm holiness of Jesus, the expectations of that crowd, and the understanding heart of Jesus, who journeyed to Jerusalem for the love of us all. Amen. the king in splendor arise fling white the gates and welcome him into your lives make way make way for the king of kings for the king of kings make way make way and let his kingdom Okay.